Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. We're going to continue that series on lung congestion today, but today we're going to be looking at another very interesting and powerful herb. It's a Chinese herb called Chinese skullcap. So first of all, Chinese skullcap is called Scatellaria bihelensis. It's a perennial herb. It's indigenous to China, and it belongs to the Lamiaceae family, and it's widely used in traditional Chinese medicine. And the properties that are attributed to its benefits are the flower, the root and the stem. We're going to review what is lung congestion. We're going to look at the molecular pathway systems of lung congestion. And really, the, there's about five molecular systems you're going to learn. And then we're going to look at how Chinese skull cap affects lung congestion. So that's what we're going to do. At a very high level, we'll get more into details. Here are your lungs, the left lung and the right lung. Here are sort of your normal air pathways. Here are congested pathways. So the top are normal, the bottom are congested. But anyway, what I want to now let you know is that the way we understand these pathways and how skull cap affects them is using a tool called Cytosol. Cytosol, you can go to Cytosol.com. And what we've done here with Cytosol is that we're able to take all of this literature. So here we're looking at lung congestion and skull cap. We take all of that literature, we extract out the relevant papers, then we extract out the molecular pathways, the five that I just covered. And then we look at how skull cap affects those pathways, not only just sort of hand waving, but mathematically. Because Cytosol lets us take this very medieval process of drug development where they can only handle a single compound, then they do stuff in a test tube, then they go kill a bunch of animals, then they do human testing. What Cytosol does, we start way before this. We do modeling way ahead. The pharma companies spend more and more money in R&D, and they're finding less and less new drugs. So anyway, there's been about 1,757 research articles, 19 clinical trials, and over 84 years of research. So there's been a decent amount of work. And you can see over here on this graph that the studies over the last 10, 15 years have explosively grown in the amount of research that's been going on. One of the things that I want to share with you is when I share this research with you, we have actually over the last 16 years of developing Cytosol and figuring out, figuring, using it for research to understand how things work. In the last couple of years, we actually use Cytosol, just like I'm doing here, mapping out all the molecular pathways of pain and inflammation, and then looking at all different flavonoids and herbs that are out there. And we were very fortunate to discover a combination of bioflavonoids, which had a very profound effect on reducing inflammation and discomfort comfort to say it specifically. So let me just play you a little thing. So you get an idea that not only can we use Cytosol like what we're doing here, but let me just show you that we've also created a product that people have been asking us to do. So this is our product. Let me share with you. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. Then I started taking that MB25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days, the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it. And even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. By the way, all the proceeds go to support our research and our movement, etc. If you buy six bottles, you get six bottles for free. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement. And it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. You can get MV25 if you go to vashiva.com right on the shop. You click there or you can go right to mv25.life what I'm playing you either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. So there are a total of 75 different chemical compounds that have been identified so far and they go into four different types, flavonoids, terpenoids, polysaccharides, and essential oils. But here are the active components of Chinese 
Chinese skull cap. So what are the biological effects of Chinese skull cap? It's an anti-convulsant, right? And that's very, very important where you're trying to stop a cough uh, or you're trying to stop something in your uh, congestive uh, issues that are going on. It's a neuroprotector. It's antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, and hepatoprotective. So you can look at it has these seven different biological effects, but it also has some health benefits too. So here are the health benefits. Helps fight diarrhea, dysentery, hypertension, hemorrhaging, insomnia, respiratory infections, and allergies. So these are the broad health benefits of Chinese skull cap. Let's talk about lung congestion. These are the five biomolecular mechanisms. One of them is where your body metabolizes arachidonic acid, and that results in inflammation we'll talk about. Then you have cytokine production via two pathways, MAPK or NF-kappa beta. The issue is how much do you have? Because when you have too much of them, you get, create the cytokine storm. Then the fourth one is mucus production through mucin production. And then the last one is smooth muscle relaxation. So the first pathway, arachidonic acid metabolism, it gets metabolized and it produces through a series of pathways here and here, prostaglandins or PGH2. And these prostaglandins eventually over here, it also produces PG2. So when arachidonic acid gets metabolized, this is where you have the inflammatory process taking place and a variable called PGE2 gets created. And you don't want that because you have high inflammation. Another mechanism is called cytokine production. Now the cytokine we're looking at here is IL-6. You can look at also TNF-alpha and COX-2. These are cytokines, but they're being produced through this pathway through what's called MAPK. Another pathway that's involved in lung congestion through NF-kappa beta here. This is the cell wall. This is the cytoplasm. And then NF-kappa beta crosses the nuclear membrane. And here you get IL-6, which is another inflammatory cytokine. And then you have mucin, mucus production, right? You can see right here, for example, how cigarette smoke through a series of pathways result in mucus here. And then you have smooth muscle relaxation when your muscle can either relax or it can contract through MLCP. When MLCP is there, you get relaxation. When MLCP is blocked, you don't get relaxation. Okay, so MLCP is a very, very important chemical that supports relaxation. So the net of it is if you want to reduce lung congestion, we want to reduce inflammation, which means reduce PGE2, which is produced during arachidonic acid metabolism. We want to reduce IL-1 and IL-8 from this cytokine. And we also want to reduce IL-6 and IL-8, again, two other cytokines. So these four cytokines, we want to downregulate and obviously want to bring down mucus production, but we want to increase MLCP because when you increase this, guess what? You get smooth muscle relaxation, which helps alleviate lung congestion. Now, what happens with Chinese skull cap? So Cytosol mapped out all of these molecular pathways, these five. We identified the particular biomarkers. These six, we want to bring down and MLCP want to increase. And you can see Chinese skull cap does uh, that on the first five here. Uh, it doesn't do much on mucin-5 and it does increase MLCP. What does it do to PG2? We definitely find out that it brings down PG uh, E2 values by almost 15%. You can see that 10 to 15%. It's pretty good. So that lowers inflammation. The next thing is that skull cap also lowers IL-1, which is a inflammatory cytokine. Not that much, but it does work on it. And same with IL-8, it brings it down. Also with IL-6, it brings that down. And also with IL-8. It has no effects on mucin-5, but when it comes to MLCP, which is the important chemical that reduces contraction, which means increases smooth muscle relaxation, but this almost went up by 20%. That's why the smooth muscle relaxation pathway is so important. So there you go. Chinese skull cap has several benefits for lung health. It down regulates inflammatory cytokines, those four cytokines, thereby controlling inflammation in lung airways. But one of the most important things it does, it down regulates MLCP production, thereby promoting lung airway muscle relaxation. So that's really, really important to understand. So I hope that was valuable. And uh, tomorrow we'll be doing another herb in the lung congestion series. Uh, be well, have a good night. And uh, please email me if you have any questions, vashiva at vashiva.com. I do go through all your emails and I do respond to them as I can. Perhaps I don't get to them right away, but I do respond to them. Thank you. Thank you.